you want to sell franchises. Should you offer incentives and discounts to franchisees to sign on and become a part of your system? You're a new franchisor, you want to accelerate the growth of your franchise system. So you're evaluating how can you sell to qualified franchisees? How could you accelerate the growth of your franchise system? And you may be questioning whether or not you should offer incentives. So things that I'll hear or I'll actually see, this is not any of our clients. I've even seen, I've seen one advertisement where a new franchisor is offering a quote free franchise. They're having a contest and the person who wins the contest gets a free franchise. Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why I think that's a horrible idea. And now back to the main topic, should you offer incentives? Well, how did this situation typically come about? Either one, you haven't received the interest that you'd like, and you're trying to identify if you can make your franchise system more competitive, or you have some prospective franchisees and you're looking for a catalyst to get the deal over the finish line. Some of the things or incentives that we typically hear franchisors consider, one would be reducing or waiving the initial franchise fee, financing the initial franchise fee, potentially waiving or delaying when the royalty starts or the brand development fund, or possibly giving the franchisee some benefits like some free inventory or some initial support. My answer is Overall, as to this question of do we offer these incentives, you should always err on the side of caution and not do it. And I'm not saying this for legal reasons. I'm saying it from a best practices standpoint of qualifying good franchisees, onboarding them with the right expectations. And let me explain. As a franchisor, the value you're building when five years from now you sit down with private equity, the value of a franchise system is your network of franchisees. Financially, it's the EBITDA revenue or EBITDA cash flow that your franchise company is generating from your franchisees. It's the validation of your franchisees. So you want successful franchisees that validate and pay royalties, right? A win-win situation. And you want to build your network and you want to get stronger challenge for every startup franchisor is we make mistakes sometimes and you onboard franchisees that may not be the best qualified or more importantly, may not be the right mindset fit. And why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because bad franchisees harm your franchise system. They don't validate, they may underperform, they may create bad relations with other franchisees. So you, you really want to build quality and you want your franchisees to align with you. Number one, the goal and the business that you're building to that they have the right capital to grow and build the business that they have the right expectations. They know the pathway ahead and they have the financial capability, but also mindset that they're making an intentional investment in your franchise system and they're dedicated to it. Now, how does this connect with our question of should you offer incentives to sell your first couple of franchises? Well, we want to make sure Franchisees have the right capital, the right mindset, and they go succeed. So let's deal with a couple of items. Number one, if we waive the initial franchise fee, you're communicating to your franchisee candidates and your franchisees that you don't value your own system. So waiving that initial upfront franchise fee is sending a very bad signal to the franchisee candidate. Also, if you're waiving the franchise fee to make the franchise more affordable to the franchisee, that should also be a red flag because it may mean your franchisee is undercapitalized. And if you're pushing them over the finish line by waiving that initial franchise fee, giving them that little economic incentive, well, you may be setting yourself up for bigger issues down the line. A franchisee that doesn't have the right capital, doesn't have money to invest in marketing, and just assumes the business should be successful in and of itself. So that's why you don't want to waive the initial franchise fee. One, sets the wrong expectations. Two, your franchisee may be undercapitalized. Third reason is because you need the capital. When you onboard a franchisee, you have an obligation, a very important obligation to train and to support them. So the initial franchise fee is used to defray those costs. If your franchisee candidate was brought to you by a broker, well, you're going to need that initial franchise fee to pay the broker fee. 
And so this analysis, right, an analysis of is the incentive or fee I'm waiving, number one, signaling to the franchisee candidate that I'm not serious and committed to my own system, two, uh, pushing the franchisee to make an economic decision uh, they may not be qualified to make, um, or three, undercapitalizing my company. This is analysis uh, that sh you should be evaluating all the time. Again, you reduce that franchise fee or you waive it, your franchisee signs on, they didn't have that barrier to entry. It's like, okay, I'll just sign an agreement as opposed to sign an agreement and commit thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 of my capital to making a bet in your franchise system. So that initial franchise fee, it's an important filter. It helps you weed out franchisees that don't have the capability or commitment. And if you waive it, it could be problematic. Now, sometimes we'll be asked, should we allow franchisees to finance the initial franchise? And for all the reasons I just mentioned, 99% of the time, I'd recommend against doing that. Again, you need that initial barrier to entry. You need to see the franchisee making that commitment. Royalty fees. Your primary revenue as a franchisor is the ongoing royalty fees that your franchisees pay to you. So sometimes we'll see comments from franchisee attorneys. This is a new franchise system. It's not as proven. We want the royalty reduced from 6% to 4%. There too, it's problematic. This is your main revenue stream. Now your unit level economics need to work. So those franchisees, we would hope would will be profitable with good cash flow in, in whatever period of time we're projecting, even after paying that 6% royalty. The concern here is again, if you reduce that royalty rate, it's sending a signal to the franchisee that you don't value your system. Also, you want, as a franchisor, uniformity and consistency among all your franchisees as to core items. And that initial franchise fee, your brand development fund fee, those are items where it's extremely important, both from a legal and franchise growth perspective, that you maintain uniformity among your franchisees. Sometimes, well, instead of asking for the royalty fee to be reduced, uh, the question would come up of, well, will you delay collecting the royalty fee for six months or not collect it during the first 12 months? I actually think that option is worse than reducing the royalty fee. Why is it? Because now a franchisee opens up for business. He or she's open. And now she's open, he or she's open for the next three, six, nine, 12 months. And what have you trained them to do? You've trained them not to pay royalties. Month 13 comes and you want to collect royalties. It creates friction. It's a really bad precedent. So I don't think for sure my recommendation, don't reduce or finance most of 99 out of 100 times the initial franchise fee. I would not reduce the royalty fee. I would not uh, defer it or delay it. Brand development fund fee, which is some people call it national advertising or brand development fund. Now remember, so that's a fee where franchisees would pay it and you put it into a global fund that you use for overall brand assets. Now, typical FDDs will say, hey, we could collect up to 2% of brand development fund, but right now we don't collect it. I could see why a franchisee candidate would say, I don't want to pay this fee right away, especially if I'm the only franchisee. Now, remember what I mentioned about uniformity and consistency, right? I'm okay with a negotiation where you say, hey, franchisee candidate, we agree that we will not implement or charge the brand development fund fee until we have 10 system franchisees on board. That's fair. And what else happens there is you're being uniform, meaning if you're not doing this for your first franchisee, until you have 10, well, you shouldn't be doing it for the next nine franchisees. So they're all consistent and the same. Naturally, you don't want franchisee one not to pay brand development fund fee, but franchisee two is. That's disparate treatment, and you wouldn't want to get there. What could be some incentives that are consistent with best practices, a good growth strategy, and legal? Well, I think it's supporting the franchisee and giving them more than what they bargained for. While I do not recommend waiving the initial franchise fee, the, you need to see the franchisee candidate pay their entrance fee, 
commit to their position, commit to joining your system. So they pay you that 30,000 or 35,000. Well, maybe you could use some of those funds to purchase and start your franchisee with their initial inventory or use some of your own funds to support and boost the franchisee's initial marketing as a supplement. So you're providing extra support. So the franchisee is paid what they're supposed to pay. They've committed to their position. They're indicating to you a good mindset and you're providing them with extra support. So should you offer incentives? Not Oh, I have to go back to the biggest item. I started off by saying we saw a franchisor offer, and they're actually working with a, a development company. They they had this big promotion. You could win an XYZ. You could win their franchise. You fill out an application. You submit why you'd be a great franchisee. And if you win, you win a franchise. Well, what does that even mean for that candidate? It means the franchisor will sign a franchise agreement with you, they won't charge you the initial franchise fee, but you as a franchisee candidate, you're going to agree to open up a location and pay royalties. That's a bad idea. Why? Because the most important thing you're going to be doing as a franchisor is weeding out franchisees that aren't a good fit. Being super selective, your first 5, 10, 15 franchisees are going to determine the future growth of your system. They need to be committed to their investment. They need to be all in. They need to show they're committed by investing their own capital and a promotion that gives it away for free. It's almost a guarantee to be bringing on the wrong franchisee and it's a sign of desperation. A lot of times when people look to incentivize by reducing royalty rates or waiving them, it's a signal that your franchise development strategy is off. Your digital marketing, your franchise brand story, the why you, why now, the video on your franchise sales website, it's usually a signal when franchise startup franchisors say, I'm going to attract franchisees by having contests or waiving fees. It's a signal something else isn't working. It's usually in the franchise development strategy and approach. This could all be figured out. But should you offer these incentives? No, unless... It's you investing to help that franchisee succeed with things like marketing and inventory and things that are going to help them validate and grow.